Hello, today I will be talking about how to create a more cartoon styled X-Gen groom based on the hair of Roddy from the Aardman DreamWorks film Flushed Away. Flushed Away was created in CGI but made to feel like stop motion. Therefore, the aim of my groom is to appear like clay but use the efficiency of X-Gen to create and animate it. I will discuss every stage of the process including building an X-Gen groom, styling it, animating and shading. I will also outline my problems and successes through my three iteration process. So this is my initial Maya scene. I began with a square mesh, which was manipulated to have the outline of Roddy's head. And with XGen plugged into Maya, I began creating guides to create the flow of the hair. I placed one guide for every thick strand on Roddy's head. In this stage, I was able to experiment with how to create a thick stranded clay appearance. This was done through manipulating the density, width, taper and clumping parameters in the XGen interface. However, this was not taken beyond this stage due to the mesh being a bad quality. The mesh was made from a square and therefore did not have enough faces on the top. This meant that XGen did not have enough faces to place a sufficient amount of strands and made controlling guides more difficult and also added to the problem of intersecting strands seen here. Moving on to iteration two. To improve on the first iteration, I created the base mesh out of a sphere, which meant there was plenty of faces on the scalp. Also, the higher quality base mesh meant the hair looked more natural on the head and would result in a better render overall. After placing the guides, I created a high density style to ensure that the clumping worked well. The high density meant that the clumps were more defined, which was evident even without the separate clump colours. To control where the hair would grow, I used a region map. This is helpful for defining the parting of the hair. The yellow region stops the hair from being produced in this area. Now that the base mesh was a better quality, I tried using a thicker strand, which I thought would be more appropriate in recreating the reference. However, the strands are still intersecting with each other, which would not look good in renders. Also, it was overwhelming to look at. I also tried using a low density, but extremely thick width. I believe that this was more truthful to the reference. However, the strands are square shaped and look different in every angle, which would be impossible to animate and it had a render time of over four minutes, which was longer than more condensed hair. Overall, the thick width was not used because the thinner width created more volume and was quicker to render. Once I was reasonably happy with the front of the head, I moved on to the back. From looking at the reference, the back was not as severely clumped as the front few strands. With a basic clumping modifier placed on just the back section, this was the result. It is slightly too clumped to match the reference, and this is easily fixed by adding a higher value in the clump modifier. After this stage, an initial render was done to see the overall results. Overall, it was rendered in Arnold in under four minutes with a high density, low width, and a taper on the tips. The problems to adjust are that the ends are too thin and could feel stronger. Also, the clumps could be more defined at the root of the scalp, like in the reference, and obviously the colour and shading needs to be adjusted. However, overall, the look is working well and the render is under four minutes, which is reasonably quick. Moving on to dynamic simulation and animation. The aim here was to create the stiff motion evident in the movie Flushed Away. The animation in this film was done manually and I want to recreate the same feel in dynamics. There are two ways to create dynamic simulation. The first method was to create an animwise control in the modifier section of XGen. However, as you can see by the results, it was not effective. The hair does not retain its shape and intersects the mesh. Therefore, I moved on to the second method outlined by Michael Couchy in his tutorials. In the animation menu within XGen, you create an n-hair system made out of curves. Then using this, you manipulate parameters in the hair system node. Initially, the results are quite naturalistic, as seen here. The results were not evident in Playblast due to the low quality. This meant that to inspect results, a batch render needed to be completed. However, this is where I reached a major problem in iteration 2. My mesh had more problems which stopped me from batch rendering. These problems were to do with the vertex points at the top and bottom of the mesh, and the mesh not being UV'd. This leads me on to iteration 3. Essentially, all the stages outlined before were completed to the same level. However, the mesh had now been UV'd and the vertex points were removed, and batch rendering was successful using V-Ray. Fortunately, it was not a problem for me to change renderers. 
but does cause some queries about the reliability of XGen. Furthermore, because I can now batch render results, I could analyse my simulations more thoroughly. Overall, the initial motion is quite realistic and needed to look stiffer to match Ardman's stop motion style. My results improved when I watched the Khan Academy's video series outlining the physics behind dynamic simulations. These videos introduced me to the damping, stiffness and compression parameters in the hair system node. Ultimately, some results were too stiff and some moved too much. However, my final simulation results had a drag of 0.114 and a stretch damp of 0.1. I also manipulated the stiffness scale so that the root is stiffer than the tips. Along with creating the simulation, I was manipulating the V-Ray hair material shader. I began with using the shiny brown preset in the shader. This was too glossy for a clay, natural look because it reflected light too realistically. The matted brown preset suited the reference more. From this, I experimented with the glossiness and found that the lower the glossiness value, the quicker the render. My final shader had a primary glossiness of 0.7 and I manipulated the primary specular to create more contrast between highlights and shadows. To conclude, I believe that I achieved my aim of recreating the flushed away Ardman aesthetic to a large extent. On the whole, I think I did reproduce the clay texture of the hair but the shading could be improved to appear more unnatural. Perhaps we're using a ramp node to control the highlights of the hair, and the strands could appear more round rather than angular. Also, I believe the motion has a nice bounce but retains the stiffness as seen in the original movie. And ultimately, this was created through simulation with little manual labour and therefore very efficient to produce.